Hi, and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. Today we're going to create a presentation for a model that we've created. We're going to go over things like how to make our background make our model pop, proper sizing of our images, and how to give information to our viewer without it being unobstructive. This is an intermediate tutorial and assumes that you have basic knowledge of Photoshop and knowledge of the various editing tools inside of Photoshop, as well as composition and color. So let's get started. I created the model on the screen inside of 3ds Max and rendered it using Marmoset Toolbag. But I found that I was a little unhappy with my final renders from Marmoset. So what I did was I took the screenshot that Marmoset output and now I'm going to set it up all nice. And one of the really awesome things about Marmoset is that when you output a render it actually comes with a alpha channel. Which makes it really easy to select the portion of your model that is not part of the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the alpha channel from my screenshots of the front of my little robot here, as well as the back, and I'm going to place them into a blank canvas. I'm going to be putting both of these angles of the robot onto a single image. If you have multiple images, however, it's easy to create a template that you'll be pasting all of your images on, because you want the image sizes to be consistent with color and placement of your text. But for right now, we're going to be working with only one image. So I'm going to cut our robot from our alpha channel, and I'm going to paste it into our blank canvas, and I'm going to do the same with the other shot, and cut it out, and paste it here. And now you can see that the two images here are different sizes, and we want them to more or less roughly the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the front facing robot and I'm just going to scale them down a little bit. We want the entire robot to be on the page. We don't want any of it to be cut off. And actually I'm just going to change my Photoshop background to like a light gray so we can see exactly where our canvas ends. We need to scale this guy down a little bit more. There we go nudge them up. And I'm just going to grab a grid line and I'm going to snap it to the top and the bottom of our model so we know exactly where it ends. And doing this is going to make it so that it looks like our model is consistent. You know, these little details are really important. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to scale him down also. So the canvas size that I'm working with right now is 1280 by 720, and this is a good 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio, and it's going to be pretty high res, so if I right click and actually view our size, it's actually pretty big. So we have the two renders of our image set up in a fairly nice place on the screen, but the problem is, is that there's not going to be a lot of space for us to actually put any information about our models. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both of these guys, and I'm actually just going to shave them down just a tiny bit more. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a little bit of bleed area on the top and the bottom and then some area over here where we can put any information about our model. So I also want to give our image a background so it's not just going to be kind of like this gray because it kind of makes the image feel a little flat. So what I usually like to do is get a background that's maybe like stone or rock or metal or something like that and just make it really 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 dark and so you kind of get just a little bit of detail frequency behind there and it tends to make things kind of stand out a little bit. So I'm just going to grab one of my textures and here we are. And this will work nicely because it has some nice noise in the background. I got this off of cgtextures.com and I'm just going to copy this and paste this into our scene here. And perfect, it's done. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our brightness and contrast and I'm going to drop our brightness way down. I'm going to leave our contrast alone, and I'm actually going to make it even darker, so I'm going to go to my brightness and contrast again, and I'm just going to bring our brightness down. So you can barely see that there's anything in the background, but it's not just a flat color, you know, you got a little bit of noise, which is nice. And I'm noticing that the left robot is tilted a little bit to the right, so I'm just going to straighten him out a little bit. There you go. And we don't need these two layers anymore, so I'm just going to delete them. And the next thing I want to do is I want the viewer to kind of have their eyes be pulled inwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a vignette. And to do the vignette, we're going to select our background layer. And I'm going to go to our effects. And I'm going to do an inner shadow. 
and I'm just going to set this to a different color so I can kind of easily more more easily see it. Set this back to black. So we kind of have this like fuzziness around the edges, which is going to pull the viewer's eye inward. And you can see if I flick it on and off, it's a little bit of a subtle effect, but that's the point. We don't want the background to be what's showing off our model. We want the model to be showing off the model. And since we're probably going to be making adjustments to these guys together, I'm just going to combine the layers. And I'm going to go to my effects, and I'm going to do a outer glow. Now, we want to be really subtle with this. Uh, we don't want it to be yellow. We want it to be maybe something maybe a little bit white with a little bit of blue in it since a lot of the model is orange it'll be a nice contrast and this is really just going to help us kind of like pop the model off of the screen and trust me it's not going to look like this so you can see where we're going with this it's kind of just going to give the model a little bit of a glow around it we're going to drop the opacity really far down Maybe make it a little bit darker. There we go. Now one of the important things to remember is that you don't want this to be... You don't want to... Now one of the important things to remember is that this is made to show off your model. It, the presentation is just there to help make your model look more exciting. So with that being said, less is more. So you absolutely don't want to have lens flares cascading over your scene because that's just going to look bad. It's going to look trashy. So just keep things nice and simple. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put a stroke around my robots. Now it works for these guys because they're kind of stylized. They're not necessarily hyper realistic, but that might not work for your model. So your mileage may vary a little bit on that. So I'm just going to come down to my effects and drop a stroke. And this is way too dark. So I'm just going to drop down to maybe something 40%. Type it in. That's actually still even a little bit too strong. And I'm going to drop the color a little bit too. There we go. Nice. So I'm really pulling away from the background right now. And the next thing you want to do is designate that the image is yours. You know, you want to have like a little signature or a link to your website or something like that. So I'm just going to, we have the little 3D Motive logo and we could just plop it down in the corner there or, you know, wherever. Well, not over here because you don't want it to intersect with your model. And right there, and you want this to be kind of small so people can look at your image and then go, oh, okay, I go to 3D Motive to find out more about this guy. And you always want to make sure that you have your name or your website on your image because if somebody, you know, is going around the internet and they find this and they're like, wow, that looks really cool, I'd be interested in seeing more from this guy. They right click and save it, and then they go to look at it later and there's nothing on it. It's like, well, I guess I'm never going to find out who did that. So make sure that you always have your name or your website on your images. And then you can kind of play around with some different filter effects. So what we can do is we can come up to something like filter and sharpen the image a little bit to create kind of like a, a nice granularity effect on it. You want to be very careful with this. You don't want to do it too harsh, otherwise it'll break, but sharpening just a little bit will be very useful. And you can also come up to your image adjustments and play around with your brightness and contrast or your levels or your curves, or you can play around with your auto auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. Sometimes these give good effects, sometimes not. So if we click auto color, it's going to give us a more white light here. So you can see the difference. It's a little yellow here, but I kind of like the yellow effect. So that's going to cover this tips and tricks course. We've gone over creating a nice presentation for our model using some renders from Marmoset, as well as using some of the Photoshop editing capabilities to really make our image look more alive. We've also gone over 
making sure that people know where to find more about our images, and using the background to help fill in the negative space. If you guys have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to leave a post on our forums. And thanks for watching 3dmotive.com.